everybody, today I'm here with Twyla the Midnight Monster and I'm back at it again with another custom webkins video. The much awaited Halloween season is finally here and what better way to celebrate than with a spooky custom webkins. After much debate, I finally settled on doing the webkins zombie bloodhound as my Halloween custom for this year. So I will be using this little Weimar on her here to create this fine spooky fellow. Let's get started, shall we? The very first thing I needed to do was buy a Weimar on her. I got this guy used off Makari in pretty good condition, but his left eye had a couple of scratches. I debated removing the eyes and changing them to green, but I ended up really liking the cracked eye. I think it really adds to the whole undead look. Then I took my seam ripper and turned him inside out. I had to remove and recreate a lot of this custom, so I split it up into sections. I took a washable marker and marked out which leg was which, so I wouldn't accidentally get them mixed up. Then I started with the ears. I took my seam ripper and removed the original ears. and trace the pieces onto the fabric. I had ordered the fabric for another project, but didn't end up ordering enough. So I decided to use it for this project instead. I think it matched nicely. After cutting the pieces out, I got started on the split left ear. First thing, I backstitched the two pieces together. Then I brought out my embroidery thread and stitched across the seam. After, I went back and added a few stitches, making sure to match the virtual design. And then I backstitched the left ear pieces together, leaving an opening for turning. I've been sewing a lot lately, so I've been wearing these little red finger guards. We bought them to use with hot glue, but they work really nicely in place of a thimble. repeat for the other ear, and then I attach them back to the head.
Next was the brown leg. I took my marker and marked out where I wanted to remove the leg, then removed the seam and cut along the line. Then I took apart the leg. Next, I brought back the copper fabric and traced, then cut, the leg pieces. Then I pinned it together and backstitched along the sides. and then attach the paw bottom. Once that was done, I turned the leg right side out and stuck it back inside the plush. Then I sewed the leg and body together. and sew the white piece back to the seam. Not 100% sure what it does, but it seemed important. After that, I realized I had forgot to add the decorative stitch line, so I turned the plush partially right side out and embroidered it. Since I forgot to add it before, I was pretty much winging it. Thankfully, it ended up looking nice in the end. Moving on to the green paw. Repeating what I had just done, I marked off and cut the paw, and took my seam ripper and removed the seam. Then I traced and cut out the green fabric.
and sewed all the pieces together. After all that, I turned it right side out and sewed it back to the body. Then I added the stitch marks to the outside of the paw. There's a line going around the paw at the seam and I tried to replicate that, but in the end it didn't show up all that well. Now for the final leg. I repeated what I had done for the previous legs. then brought out my fabric markers to add the spots. Then I set them aside to dry. Three days later and the marker was just as wet as when I had first left it. Ironically, the washable marker stained more than the fabric one. So I scrapped those pieces and cut out some new ones. But this time I decided to sew on fabric spots. First I pinned the spots to where I wanted them, then I went over with a slightly large straight stitch. Afterwards, I went back over with a satin stitch. It's a very time consuming stitch, but it gives it such a nice finish, so it was worth it to me.
Then I sewed the leg together and attached it to the body. Then it was time to turn the body right side out. I thought I had sewed the spy leg backwards so I'd stop the camera, but turns out it just looked that way. <laughs> now for the outer details. I started by adding the bean pouches back to the paws. and then made the copper tail tip. Once that was done, I stuffed the head, then embroidered the stitches onto the muzzle and back of the head. and then finish stuffing the plush. Next, I added the little toe lines to the paws. Then ladder stitch the plush close. Now onto the back patch. I cut out a white circle, then trimmed it to fit the back. Next I cut out the spots, this time remembering to wash out the fabric marker. Then I pinned spots on and trimmed the excess. Next, I attach them with a straight stitch and finish them off with a satin stitch.
Now that the patch is all ready, I ladder stitched it to the plush. and added the little decorative stitch marks. And then the plush was finished. I'm incredibly proud of how he turned out. He just looks so adorable. This plush was very different from any of the ones I've made in the past, so it was a little bit of a challenge, but I'm really glad I decided to make this guy. Just so cute! <laughs> so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Mwah! Just kidding! There's actually more. On Webkin's world, my zombie bloodhound's main outfit has a top hat and now I associate him with top hats. So obviously I needed to make him one. I used a small paper cup as a pattern for the top hat. First thing I did was trace the opening of the cup onto the black fabric and then traced another circle around it. This is going to be the brim of the hat, so the further apart the two circles are, the wider the brim. Then I cut that out and traced it to make a second piece. Next, I took apart the cut and traced the pieces onto the fabric. Then I took the side piece and measured some ribbon to fit across it. I pinned the ribbon and straight stitched along the top. Then repeat it out for the bottom. Next, I folded the piece in half and sewed along the edge. Then I took the circle piece and sewed it to the smaller end of the side piece. Back to the brim, I backstitched around the outside of the pieces. Then I turned both the brim and hat right side out. I lined up the hat and brim pieces, then pinned them into place. I made the brim a bit too big, so I trimmed some of it off to fit. Then I backstitched the pieces together.
also ladder stitched the area of the brim I had to cut. And there we go. He now has a top hat to complete his look. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!